first uh, when Timbuktu was occupied by jihadists. Uh, one year occupation. And uh, I read every day in the newspaper uh, about hostage, but all the time it was European hostage. It was journalists who was kidnapped. It was sometimes French, American person. Nobody talk about 1,000 people who live and was frustrated every day by this occupation. For me, the concept of victim is a very strange concept because people talk road about the victim mostly if the victim les ressemble, what you say, <coughs> look like, yeah. And, and for me, it was very important to talk about victim who no, nobody talk. The courageous woman who refused to put, yeah, who refused to cover, and people who play the football without ball, or the music were forbidden, but people sing slowly in the silence. And it's very important to, to believe that humanity has a strong capacity to, to fight. <laughs> and the victories come not only from the army, Army, of course, can liberate city, etc. And for me, it was very important to talk about my community, who believe who is Muslim. They pray every day, more than two, two, two million, and they have completely different concept of Islam than the, those people who come. And it's important how they protect Islam. And when you never talk about those people in the TV, in the newspaper, and you talk only about the crazy person who use the way like you talk, it's terrible. It means we don't have the capacity to manage our world. What you, uh, Abdurrahman. When we met in Mauritania, you told me then that um, those youngsters who start playing football without a ball, um, it's, it's a very powerful image um, about the resistance um, through culture. About the resistance, I mean, you know, we spoke about Dostoevsky, that beauty can save the world. I mean, that's the thing what is extremely important for you. Why? Because beauty is come from any culture. Yes. Beauty. Nobody has the monopoly of beauty. Yes. The beauty comes from not only from Bach or Mozart, but the beauty comes from the place who never know who composed the song. That is also beauty. Beauty comes from the people also who don't have her own painter or compositor, but every day, every morning, they dress like painter. Yeah. That is very important to understand that culture is mean not only the, the official culture. Culture is not only in the museum or in the theater. Beauty is everywhere. And it's very important to, to know that and to, to say that. For me, beauty, beauty it's, uh, it's really what you have. It's beauty. And if you have something, you can share and tell. And 
I was completely fascinated by Russian culture. It was music, it was theater, it was many things. But I didn't know before that, but I accept that and I keep that. Many things I keep, I can now to put to my work, to the cinema, and to do the movie like that. But you see, the, the, the quintessential European question, what haunts us since the world of totalitarianism, and what's the question of uh, Adorno and Benjamin and uh, Stein and many others, that the world of beauty, that the world of the arts, that the world of the humanities did not protect us from the world of barbarism. Instead, I mean, that's the awful thing that the greatest uh, uh, perpetrators indeed were, you know, educated, intelligent people, they knew their real cur or, and so on and so forth. So and th that's, look, I, I'm very much impressed by uh, what you, you know, what you show us on, 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 on what, it, how simple resistance can be to uh, the power of barbarians. That there is an other power which is stronger than their power. Yet at the same time, we know that in a certain way it did not work. I mean, this whole world of the humanities collapsed in the eyes of uh, uh, barbarism, but... But for me, uh, it's really interesting about the definition of barbarian. And the barbarism is not to have the capacity to resolve our problem today. You know, we built, no, let me finish. We built several years ago a wall between two Berlin. Yeah. And this wall was failed. And we continue today to build a wall. Yeah. And we forget, because it's not important, that is this wall we built today cannot exist for a long time. Yes, for me, the reaction against any wall we build, even in Mediterranean, they build war because poor people want to. Yeah. And against of this wall, we need to create something different. That is, art can help that. Well, there we are. Art, the intellectuals, culture can it help us? I would, I, would be, I would be careful about culture as an, just I'll say briefly, as an opponent of evil, because culture has been used very beautifully and effectively by all kinds of evil regimes, um, by, by Hitler, by Stalin, by, by many others. And as you said a minute ago, um, there's a way in which what some of the fanaticists, the, the Islamic fanatics now do, is try to create, it's a kind of art, it's a kind of performance art, what they, what they do with television, with... Culture. So in a way, culture, a little bit like the internet and the social media, is, is morally neutral. I mean, it's a, it's a way we have of communicating and a way we have of creating. You know, the question is, what are the politics and the values behind it? And that, that's more important than the objects it's, itself. I think culture uh, can give us courage courage to hold on our dreams and our aims, but not my aims, but the aims of Adolf Hitler too. And it's, uh, it's a simple fact. Uh, culture is a tool. Thinking is a tool. Uh, int intellectuality is a tool. And this night we saw high intelligent crimes. Um, and so I think we should be a bit careful to have too much hopes in thinking or in culture. It's a dream of the 18th century. It's the d dream of enlightenment. Um, if we find the, the courage to use our own understanding, if we find the courage uh, to focus on the good, the truth, and the beautiful, uh, in the end, we will be better, have a better world and be better man. Uh, but this uh, theory is over 200 years old now, and I think it did and does not work so good. So um, I come from the 18th century myself, so 
so I am admirer of the Enlightenment, but uh, we have to uh, remember that there's only one philosopher who told us that thinking is something so special that it is beyond good and evil. That the thinker itself, the intelligent human itself, is the highest possible thing. And this was Martin Heidegger, a Nazi philosopher. Uh, so I think we will um, make a better deal believing that thinking is a tool and you can use a tool for very different aims.